Hi there, everybody. It's Zach Davian back once again with another Shoutcast for Epic Skill Shots channel. Very happy to be here. Hope you guys are happy to see me here. And uh, we're going to be hopping the ocean once again, going over to the European West servers and starting off a ranked fives match between the team's Theory of Doom and Fnatic's new lineup, by the way. For those of you not aware, Fnatic has had a lot of changes since the last season's end. Of course, Xpeke and Soaz left to found the team Orihen, which, uh, well, that's two of their members gone right there, and then things just kind of snowballed from there. Cyanide has retired from the scene entirely, no longer a professional League of Legends player, so of course he's off the roster, and if memory serves, I believe Reckles did indeed choose to go and join Alliance, but it looks like we might have Cassidy and Kai on the enemy jungle a little bit. Ward gonna be dropped down to uh, spot him out as he goes into the bush to try and break vision. Ward again, they are not allowing him to get away with this. He flashed away and he burned heal, but he's gonna be going down in the end anyways. As the shock blast from Jace weaves its way past his ear and finishes off the first blood. Going over to Fnatic, going over to Forbiven, indeed in the mid lane and I was just about to get in to the new additions rather than simply the subtractions from Fnatic's roster. Fabivan, of course has joined the roster. He is their new mid laner. He is definitely worth watching. He already has proven himself to be able to qualify for the LCS since he did just last season with H2K and uh, of two imports from Korea as well. A lot of teams seem to like to do that, grab players from that region and who can blame them? It is one of the most powerful regions for pretty much all of esports including League of Legends esports in the world and uh, they've decided to grab Huni for their top lane and reign over for the jungle. Both Korean players with fairly illustrious careers under their belts, one of them having played with uh, Jin Air of course and in the mid lane there's Forbidden going right in onto Locke. Locke turns around and deals some good damage himself though so that's an even trade so far. Gonna be sustained up a little bit better by Fabivan because he has actually gone fairly deep into the utility tree mastery, which is a little bit odd to see on a Jace mid lane pick, but I can understand it in this particular matchup because Azir is quite a powerful lane bully, and choosing to go with a bit more regenerative power in the lane can be really helpful against someone who can just spam out soldier attacks on you over and over again, and Fabivan, he's not just gonna stand back and farm up this lane and let Azir have the kind of lane that Azir really likes to have. He's gonna be going aggressive, as we've seen two times already, and we're not even three or four minutes in yet. Ooh, but speaking of going aggressive, Yellowstar is going right up there, knocking up both members of the enemy bot lane right into the air. Yellowstar, they, they completely ignore the uh, Thresh as well. They load all of their damage down onto Graves, which means that there's not gonna be as much um, getting rid of that damage. That damage is going to stick, because Thresh has Biscuits. Thresh has lots of health regen in his initial build. He's got consumables, as does Yellowstar, by the way. Most supports liking to pick up a lot of health potions in their starting items nowadays. Um, so that means that the damage that went back onto Yellowstar is going to be more easily removed than the damage that was traded for it onto Titus's um, graves down there. So, going to be a good trade for the side of Fnatic, and uh, some, some good thinking in choosing their focus during that fight. But I digress, we can go and look at some of the other lanes, like perhaps the top lane, where we see um, the newest top laner for Team Fnatic, of course, Huni, one of the imports from Korea, as I was saying, is uh, going to be playing a Lissandra top, which is a very, very European thing to do, and uh, perhaps he's just adapting to his new setting there, choosing to play one of the most beloved European top laners, uh, top lane champions, rather, Lissandra, and we saw it a few minutes ago, he's actually going so far as to use the Glacial Path to clear the wave. He is on cooldown, sending his abilities across the minion wave and pushing as hard as he can, because Lissandra very, very hard to gank. And of course, we've seen Jarvan with a few well-placed wards by Yellowstar down on the bottom side of the map, so he knows that he's very, very safe up in the top lane. And he's against a Cassadin, who doesn't have the best laning pressure and needs to be shut down earlier, or else can snowball. But I'll get back to that in a second. There's the flash forward, actually, to land the knockup on Forbidden. Forbidden turns around, though, and knocks him back towards the tower. And Law! Law was used as a cap closer, as an escape, rather, for Forbidden. He got knocked away, and then Forbidden gap closed to him and used him as an escape to escape the gank. And actually, he's going to get the kill as well. That Shock Blast doing lots and lots of damage. Rek'Sai there for the assist. And that's going to be double buffs and a kill going over to Forbidden's mid lane Jace. That is going to make Azir have a terrible, terrible time of it. 
in the near future. Down on the bottom side of the map, Exhaust has been dropped, traded for heal at this point, traded for Ignite as well, that was dropped onto Steelback, who, by the way, I have not yet gotten to, is another new addition to the roster, but heal popped up in the top lane by Kassadin, and it looks like Rek'Sai is coming for a little bit of Void Man flesh. I'm not entirely sure why Rek'Sai would want to eat that, but maybe it's what she hunts in her natural environment. And uh, despite the fact that he keeps breaking vision by going into the bushes, that's not really a big deal for Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai can, of course, track someone even through a lack of real vision just by their footsteps. And while Kassanen does seem to kind of float along, I guess he makes footsteps on the ground. I'm not entirely sure how that would work. Uh, Rek'Sai would track someone like Janna who flies around, or Corky in his plane, so... Uh, we'll, we'll let that slide for now. And uh, return to the bottom lane where Yellowstar looks to be in, being engaged on here. The hook flies out, but goes a little bit wide, doesn't quite land onto either of them, and the Valkyrie is going to bring him, bring Steelback, rather, right to safety, before Jarvan's even there able to make any sort of gank happen. So, Jarvan's time wasted in the bottom lane by a very well-timed Valkyrie, and the fact that both of them dodged out of the hook. Had that hook connected, it probably would have spelled death for one or the other of them, but thankfully... Jarvan was not quite able to uh, make the gank happen because the hook flew a little bit wide, or thankfully for Fnatic, I suppose. Anyways, we've had a little bit of time here, so we can start seeing some of the builds start to germinate. So while we have some quiet... Actually, we don't have quiet at all. There's the knock-up landing on Kassin, and he's forced to flash away in the top lane. He might be able to survive here. I don't know. Rek'Sai's going under the tower. One more auto-attack flashes for it. Gets the execute true damage as well. And that is going to be Rain over picking up a kill under the tower in top lane. After he picks up a kill, basically under the tower in top lane, he did the same thing just like twice in a row up there. And now Cassidin is so, so very far behind. I mean, he was not having an easy time of it before. That was 46 to 27 CS lead there for Lissandra. But that could have been come back from. I mean, Cassidin's kind of the king of comebacks. From bad lanes, he's used to having a bad lane. He was born with the bad lane. You merely adopted it, but he, in fact, was born in that circumstance. And he has never had a good laning matchup. Very, very rarely, rather, has had a good laning matchup because Cassidy is simply not built for that situation. But anyway, down on the bottom side of the map, we see Rek'Sai coming in, dealing some good damage to Thresh, but he barely gets away. He's out of vision, finally! The hot phosphorus bomb from Steelback is going to finish off the kill, and he Valkyries forward to grab the double kill onto Graves as well. And now dashing forward, Forbidden deals some good damage in the... Aw, oh, the Emperor's Divide. That would have been wonderful had it worked. Would have thrown him back under the tower, like behind it even, because they don't just push you to where they end up, they even throw you a little bit. Those shield-bearing soldiers that Azir tosses out. But uh, Forbidden was able to get on the right side of the wall rather than the very, very wrong side of it. And so... He didn't quite get tossed back into the tower, and that is his result kind of wasted, which is one of his more powerful, um, one of his more powerful abilities to follow up on a gank. So, if we were to see Law come to the mid lane, there's a lot less potential for Forbidden to really die in that sort of situation, which is really, really bad because Fnatic is starting to take control of this game here. The top lane is decisively in favor of Huni now. There is no question about it, Lissandra has beaten this castle and pretty much into the ground. And it looks like they are going to be extending their sphere of influence into the jungle, over into the blue buff area. That's going to be stolen away. Actually given to Huni's Lissandra, it looks like Fabivin wanted to grab it himself, but he has his own blue buff to pick up. That is, unless we see Law grab them. As you can see in the minimap there, Jarvan is going over towards the blue buff and he's already at it. The yellow star is going that way as well. He might find him and interrupt him there. He's walking on the wrong side of the wall to do that, though. And both bot laners from Team Theory of Doom are here to back up the Jarvan. He does seal it away, and he's going to flag and drag over the wall. And he's got a lot of blue members around him. However, there's the teleport. There's the Rek'Sai ult. They want this fight. Yellow star looking to try and follow up on his team's map movements, but... But they just didn't have the range to catch up to this fight, maybe. Just, maybe they can do it. The smoke screen. The smoke screen from Titus might be able to keep them safe. The shock blast over the wall. There's the Q. Can anyone finish off this Graves? He's so low, the Chilling Smite doesn't quite bring him down either. He's just about managing to get away. The heal. The heal keeps him alive. The shield brings him to safety. And he manages to get out by the skin of his teeth four times consecutively. <laughs> I thought Titus was dead. A 
yeah, a good four, maybe five times in that single chase, but um, he did manage to get out, but at what cost? It looks like the dragon is pretty much controlled at this point by the side of Fnatic, though they're not actually going for it. They probably, they, I guess they just don't really want to risk that since they do know that there is vision set up around that area for Theory of Doom, and their jungler doesn't have Smite anymore because he used Chilling Smite to try and chase down the Graves, which we all saw how that worked out. So they don't quite want to go for the Dragon. However, since they managed to chase away Graves and use a ton of, use up a ton of the enemy team's resources in doing so, they know that they don't need to worry about them doing a Dragon right away, but maybe they need to worry about them doing a Dragon now since it looks like Theory of Doom is going right for that objective. There is no vision in this area for Fnatic either. They are just about coming down here and it's already below half health. Yellowstar is doing his best to try and interrupt it, but there's not going to be any John of Miracle Steel today. Smite secured for Law. However, maybe they might give up some kills after taking out the Dragon. There is Azir going very, very low. The Rockets are coming out from Corky. The knockup doesn't quite connect, but Jace is off to the side. He falls over the Q, flashes over the wall, and Forbidden is on a killing spree. Meanwhile, off to the side, Law falls, and Titus has no more summoner spells, no more resources. He's very low on health, probably going to get chased down right here. The entire team of Fnatic, aside from their top laner, was intent on bringing him down, and uh, they certainly managed to fulfill their intentions. That is going to be 11 kills for Fnatic, 0 for Theory of Doom, but they do have a dragon to their name, I'll give them that. I don't know if that's going to be enough to save them at this point. They need to do something drastic to get back into this game. Steelback and Yellowstar are going to be pushing off the bottom lane, going to be looking to get that first turret of the game since, despite the fact that we've had 11 kills on the map and we've had multiple fights, even an ace come out for Fnatic, this is only going to be the first turret of the game that they're going to be grabbing. And uh, that's going to be Steelback finishing it off. And I didn't really have time to go into who Steelback is. A lot of you probably scratching your heads of that name, as I did for a little while. He's a um, solo queue player from France, and he's quite up, quite up high on the ladder. He's quite a good solo queue player, but he has yet to be tested on any sort of competitive stage. So he's a bit of a gamble for Team Fnatic, as the Shock Blast brings lockdown very, very low. And Shanae up in the top lane, forced to back away as the turret finally falls under all of that continual, continual pressure that Huni has been putting out virtually the entire game. Forbidden fires off another blast, but it doesn't quite connect. And we have a moment here to look at some of the item builds. Looks like we have Steelback finishing off the Trinity Force, so that is a big, big power spike for Corky, as if, as if they really needed the power spike at this point. They are hurting a ton, but don't give up advantages when you don't need to. Forbidden is dominating, and there is Huni coming in with the ulti as well. Maybe, just maybe, Law can get some revenge here. He does manage to bring Huni down, but he is going to pay for it with his life. Rain over brings him down as well. That is a jungler bringing a jungler down, and we're going to swap to the mid lane here for the third turret of the game. The third turret being the third outer turret for the side of Theory of Doom going to be falling. Oh, Chilling Smite lands, and they might want to dive under two towers here to bring down Titus. He turns around the collateral damage and it barely even tickles them. That is about how far behind Titus is in this lane. He has not even completed any of his items, and there's already a Triforce on the Corky on the other side. And uh, Shanae shifting over the wall to try and escape here. The hook lands, and he's going to be following up, actually, with a tunnel over the wall. Might be able to finish off this Cassidy. He does knock him up, but he has another flash. Cassidy is a very, very slippery guy, so he manages to escape over the wall, and that's going to be shut down gold going over to Law. That is the second kill that Theory of Doom has been able to pick up, and it's the second kill on to Law, so maybe we will be seeing a Jarvan carry this game. I would be very excited to see them come back from this. I always love a good underdog story because at this point that is indeed what it would be. They have given up the lead. They are decisively behind at this point in the game, but they are not out. They're down, but they're not quite out yet because it isn't over until one of the Nexus is ne Nexi? I'm not sure about the plural pronunciation of Nexus. Um, until one of the two large floating crystals near the enemy base explodes, Emperor's Divide trying to keep Azir safe, and it looks like it's gonna work for now, but uh, they're probably going to have to give up that blue buff, seeing as there is a lot of members of Fnatic in this area, and not quite as many members of Theory of Doom, so... That's going to be the secondary mid lane turret falling as well, and the flash forward from Yellowstar good to go for this engage here, lands a slow, and the slow is followed up by Huni, finishing off the kill onto the enemy support, and uh, just gliding on away like 
He doesn't have a care in the world, which he really doesn't at this point. This this Lissandra top lane is an absolute monster. Finished off a needlessly large rod on top of the power spike that Amarella and Amicon gives, which admittedly isn't as big as the power spike a lot of needlessly large items give, but uh, Kassadin might be caught out of position here. He gets snared up, he gets knocked up again, he gets taken out. That is a lot of damage coming from Rain Over, and the flag and drag is interrupted by the Monsoon Laws. Chance at redemption there for his fallen comrades, completely nixed by Yellow Star's ults. And they're going to go ahead and take the secondary turret in the top lane as well. That is five turrets fallen. We are not even 17 minutes into this game yet. And uh, there's 17 kills on the board. This is starting to look like a little bit of a bloodbath for Fnatic. Or I suppose the bloodbath would be for Theory of Doom. I'm not quite sure of the syntax on that. Um, as far as ways back into this game for Theory of Doom, I mean, obviously they need to stall. They need to stall. Now, in terms of how to stall, they don't have very many options. They need to wait for a mistake on the side of Fnatic, which seems unlikely to me, but is certainly possible. Any team can be consumed by their own hubris, especially in a situation where they have this many kills this early on into the game. You can become a little bit sloppy, a little bit overconfident. So maybe they can just rely on that happening, people overextending in a solo sort of push. But it really doesn't look like Fnatic is doing that. They are keeping tight. They are keeping well together. Forbidden, though, maybe going for a 1v2 here. Gets knocked back by the Emperor's Divide. He might be in some trouble. He's going very, very low, but he hasn't been brought down yet. And the amount of time it took them to kill him means that the rest of his team could show up. And while they did bring him down, they traded two kills for it. They really cannot sustain those sorts of trades for very much longer. It, they, they just can't sustain those sorts of trades at all. This game will be over in a very, very short amount of time if uh, something doesn't turn around and turn around drastically for Theory of Doom. And it doesn't look like this dragon is going to be that. It's going to be the smite secured by Rain over, and everybody's going to head back onto base on the side of Fnatic. Actually, maybe they're looking to make some sort of fight here. Oh, Tide, Titus might be caught out in the enemy jungle, in his own jungle now, which... I said the enemy jungle because it may as well be. <laughs> I just... I even lost track of which jungle was which. That is how much of a stranglehold Fnatic has on this game right now. As uh, Rain over, forced to dash away from the enemy team, but I'm sure in the future he's going to be dashing right into the middle of them because that is a very, very tanky Rek'Sai at this point. He did not need to build damage. Watching what Rek'Sai builds has become an interesting pastime for me because no one seems to have a single concise build that is the be-all and end-all of Rek'Sai builds. You can go either tanky or full damage, or anywhere along the scale in between, so always interesting to look down at the builds and see what Rek'Sai is in fact going to get in her inventory this particular match, and it looks like um, Brain Over is going for a very, very tanky build, because at this point there is so much damage with the rest of his team that he really doesn't need to be a damage source, as we can see, that is Street Back flashing forward and dominating, getting a triple kill, no, yeah, that's a, that's a triple kill? It didn't announce a triple kill. Oh no, that was just the kill credit for a tower and then two kills. Confusing me with the pictures on the side of the screen. All I do is watch the pictures, guys. It's the secret to shoutcasting. Anyways, the ult landing Yellow Star is going to be getting the kill with the Zephyr as there is another kill for Jace. Law going to be falling. And this is the first inhibitor of the game going down before 20 minutes. There are 23 kills before 20 minutes. That is a rate of more than a kill a minute. Fnatic is crushing this match right now. They have minions in the bottom lane. They may as well go and push that as well. They've got Jace and Corky with the Trinity Force. They can bring turrets down like they are absolutely nothing. That really looked like it connected that Shock Blast, but I guess Graves did manage to quick draw out of there. And uh, he, he quick draws so fast that not even I can see what's going on. And it looks like Fnatic is going to be heading on home back to base and potentially going for some kind of final push, or maybe a Baron. The Baron hasn't actually spawned yet, which is odd because we're at the point in the game in terms of momentum and in terms of builds and such that it seems like they should be going for a Baron, that they should be going for these late game objectives and goals, but we're not even at the point where those are options, like literally not even options because the map doesn't let you do that this early on. Fnatic is having a crushing performance right now, but perhaps not this particular part of it. The playback is going to bring rain over, and they really, really want this kill onto the Rek'Sai. side. They are going to get it, but that was a lot used. Five members of Theory of Doom were there. Four, three or four ults were burned. 
Rek'Sai did go down in the end, though. And uh, if they can stave off the rest of Fnatic for a little bit longer, that will have been worth it because it will have bought them time. And they do have a fairly decent late game team. I mean, they've got the Azir who can really do a lot of work late game, but it still is quite a long shot, especially when Law is forced to just flash over his own jungle because Yellow Star happens to be nearby. That is going to be the surrender vote. Theory of Doom giving up the ghost here. It was quite a difficult game for them to catch. And uh, Fnatic picking up a victory. Thank you guys for watching. I've been Octavian. I hope you enjoyed.